Manchester United's biggest game of the season and the same old story. Sloppy slow start, giving the opposition a head start and when the game is in a losing position, they start to play. On the whiteboard, I'll be focusing on Leipzig's rotating false nines into midfield and how that pulled United's midfield and defensive formation all over the field and the defensive incompetence of wan -Bazaka. First, let's look at the stats. United had the better of the possession, 19 shots to 9, 11 of them inside the box. Statistically, it didn't seem possible United could have lost the game, but it was the first 20 minutes that won the game for Leipzig. Let's go to the whiteboard to see why. United played the tried and tested 5-2-1-2 formation that Oli tends to turn to for the big games. Leipzig lined up with three at the back and the two wing-backs, who play as proper wing-backs. But it was Nangelsmann midfield formation and tactical execution of it that took United to the cleaners. Leipzig played with one centre midfield player and knowing United always play with a double pivot in midfield, Nangelsmann positioned Nkuku and Sabitza on the outside of McTominay and Matic to exploit this space. And finally, Leipzig had the two false nines up front. The tactical execution of Leipzig's formation was to push the wing-backs up the pitch up against United's wing-backs to hold them out wide and maintain the space on the outside of McTominay and Matic. From the back, Leipzig's only thought was to play the ball out wide, in this case, out to Angelino on the left. McTominay would get pulled across to pick up Nkuku, who was occupying the space on the outside of McTominay. It was at this point, one of Leipzig's false nines was stepping to midfield to attract Matic, leaving Sabitzer as the spare man. Once the space had been created for Sabitzer, Leipzig would play the ball back into the back three to switch the play out to Sabitzer as the spare man, and vice versa on the other side of the pitch, with Nkuku being the spare man in that scenario. This is why United got overrun in midfield, which pulled both United's midfield and defensive formation all over the pitch. Moving on to the screenshots of the first goal, Orban has the ball in space, and the obvious pass is a ball infield to Kanate, but Orban keeps the ball out wide because the space has yet to be created in midfield. Orban plays the ball out wide to Angelino, who has wan -Bazaka pinned to the touchline. McTominay engages in Cuckoo, and Matic gets pulled across by Forsberg, who has stepped back into midfield from the false nine position, and now the space for Sabitzer has been created. Angelino plays the ball back to Nkuku and he plays the ball onto Orban. From this shot, you can see how far McTominay and Matic have been pulled across the pitch by Nkuku and Forsberg, creating the space for Sabitzer. Orban plays the ball onto Kanate and he plays the ball out to Sabitzer into the space created. Even though I am demonstrating Leipzig's tactics to create space, Greenwood had the opportunity to help out United's midfield to shut this move down. From this position, Greenwood can see the space Sabitzer has in front of him and he is within striking distance of Sabitzer. That gap is maybe 5 yards. Moving to the next screenshot, the distance has gone from 5 yards to 15 yards. Once again, lazy limp work rate from United's front line. From here, Sabitzer plays a great ball in behind United's defence and Angelino hits a great finish. Now looking at how Leipzig's false line stepping into midfield affected United's defensive structure. Going back to the screenshot of the ball going into midfield to Sabitzer, with the ball switching, Leipzig recreate the same situation, but this time Olmo is the false nine that steps into midfield. But this time, because McTominay and Matic are not in position to deal with Olmo, Maguire steps out to pick him up. The result of this is, wan -Bazaka and Lindelof get pulled across the pitch to cover the space Maguire vacated, leaving Angelino in acres of space. Moving on to wan -Bazaka's defending, we all know that wan one-on-one -on -one defending is excellent, but his positional play, spatial awareness and awareness of players around him is shocking, especially when the ball is coming cross-field or into the box from United's left-hand side. Before I look at what happened in the Leipzig game, I will look at a few examples of wan -Bazaka's defending in previous games. Against Arsenal earlier in the season, Bellerin is about to put the ball into the box and you can see that wan -Bazaka is touch tied to Aubameyang. At the point the ball comes across the penalty box, wan -Bazaka has completely lost Aubameyang who just misses the ball for a tapping. In the same game, Bellerin again is about to put a cross in. wan -Bazaka is literally touch tied to Saka with his hand on his back, 
but when the ball comes into the box, Wambasaka is just standing there watching Saka jump for the header. If Wambasaka was worried about Aubameyang, he should have given Lindelof a shout to drop back. The next situation is the worst and most high profile in the Europa League semi-final against Sevilla. At the point Neves is about to put the ball into the box, Wambasaka is touched tight to Dion on the edge of the penalty area. When the ball comes in, Wambasaka stops going with Dion and he tapped it in. Most people blamed Lindelof for this, but Wambasaka was marking Dion on the edge of the box and could see the whole situation unfold, where Lindelof could not see Dion behind him. Moving to the Leipzig game, in the first half, there were eight switches of play from United's left-hand side over to the right-hand side, which was a clear indication they were targeting Wambazaka. Switch one, Campbell switches the play out to Angelino, but Wambazaka managed to get his head to this one. Switch two, almost on the ball, and he instantly looks across the field, ignoring Forsberg, and plays a cross-field ball out to Angelino. Switch three, Sabitzer plays the ball out to Angelino in acres of space. Switch four, Sabitzer is again about to switch the ball out to Angelino. Look at the gap between Wambasaka and Angelino. The second phase of this play is Angelino putting the ball into the box for Leipzig's second goal. Switch five, Forsberg plays the ball into Unkuku, who switches the ball out to Angelino. Switch six, Haidara, the right wing back, switches the ball out to Angelino. This is the cross that led to the Forsberg chance to make it 3-0. Switch 7 is the most comical. This picture isn't the best, but Mukele takes a short throw to Haidara. Haidara plays it back to Mukele, and then Mukele, without looking, hacks the ball first time across the field in the general vicinity of Wambasaka. Wambasaka doesn't read the flight of the ball, gets caught underneath it, and Angelino is in behind Wambasaka. The missing switch from these examples was the first goal which I've already showed. There's no doubt that Leipzig tactics made it very difficult for United's midfield and defence, but Leipzig clearly targeted Wambasaka's defensive deficiencies which accentuated the difficulties United had with Leipzig's tactics. There's more to defending than just slight tackling. The devil's verdict is Nangelsmann with his double false nine tactic and targeting of Wambasaka completely outwitted Oli in the opening stages of the game. However, if United's work rate had been better, they could have weathered the storm. If United had hung in there without conceding or only conceding one, United would have won the game and gone through. But they were up against a much better side than Southampton and West Ham and gave themselves too much to do from 3-0 down. With Oli looking down the barrel again, he has another big game to save his skin against City. City have been defending much better and since the Spurs game, United have been more cautious against the better teams. I see the game being very tight and maybe even finishing nil-nil. Let me know in the comments what you thought of the analysis and how you thought the game went. Thank you for watching and please like, subscribe and share and I'll see you in the next video.